Hey everybody, this is Andy Hall, and with me this week is Samuel Isaac Dilly. He is the creator of Hooligan Web Comics and a awesome YouTube channel by the same name. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm going to call you Sam. Is that okay, Sam? Yeah, that's great. Um, that's how I introduced myself on the channel and everything. How are you doing, Andy? I'm doing great. Great. I think I'm doing okay. Um, you know, <laughs> um, I, I don't have the cancers or anything. I, I, I make this joke with my girlfriend that I have you think, anxiety but it's hard to cancers. Say. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think that maybe ah, my yeah. body is, is preparing to – it's still in the decision category, uh, deciding time mm. of what kind of cancer to give me. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, but overall, I think I'm doing okay. How about you? Did you say <laughs> you're doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing great. I, I'm already done with my cancer. I had that a couple of years ago. I don't know if you can oh. see the scar. Oh yeah, dude. So That's, is that uh, the is that the arm cancer? I haven't heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The uh, luckily I got it early off. <laughs> awesome. uh, no, that it was a melanoma. Uh, oh. It was a it was a skin cancer. It was a melanoma, and um, right, right, it right. like so. Um, the oncologist told me uh, that I was. I was pretty lucky it was stage 1A um, and like it had been on my arm for like 15 years. So oh, wow. uh, it largely because of like for a long, a long time, I couldn't get uh, health insurance. And so mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't see a doctor to get it dealt with. So, um, but by the time that I finally did have uh, Medicare, um, uh, luckily, it, it ended up being a particularly dangerous. It was never, like my life was never in danger. Um, so I so sort Sam, of I got lucky, but it also uh, it it was also, but like it scared me into like getting serious about changing careers. <laughs> oh right, 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 very good. So tell me about the YouTube channel you're doing right now. Um, so I started doing uh, web comics in 2006, and. Uh, I sort of, you know, from the very beginning, I always sort of thought of myself uh, less as like a uh, an artist or an illustrator and more as a comedian. Right. Um, and so uh, lately I've just, I've started doing YouTube videos as a, like a new vehicle for my comedy because, um, you know, it's, you know, good to try different mediums. Um and so, you know, I do a little bit of everything. I, I still occasionally do uh, some, you know, web comics, although I haven't done them in a while. And I do plan to, I mean, I plan to get back to updating my web comic uh, eventually. But for the moment, I'm just, I'm trying to grow my, uh, my YouTube channel with some other kinds of comedy videos where I, I, I my biggest influences, I think, are, are probably mostly from like the Daily Show. Like I, sure. My comedy tends to be sort of um, geared toward uh, not necessarily political, but uh, generally geared toward trying to um, uh, both be, you know, entertain, yes, but also like deliver some kind of useful content that helps people, you know, uh, deal with issues. Right. I, I just saw your last video that you put up a couple of days ago. It's uh, mm -hmm. bad dating advice. It's, I guess it's one in a series of videos that you're doing. Yeah. Right. Of uh, the, the uh, premiere episode of uh, a series that I'm calling um, Refined Print, uh, which is where I'm like uh, sort of uh, comedy reviewing um, various like nonfiction books. Right. It's chock full of information. I learn things. Not only did mm. I laugh, but I learned a lot. That of is stuff. awesome. Covered, That's you, my you goal. You, yeah. I mean, it, it, in that video, you covered things like groupthink, racism, incels. Tell me about the book that you were looking at, and, and let's get into it. Um, so the book is by Carol, a Harvard, Stanford, and I think Columbia uh, psychology professor. Um, she's done... 20 plus years of research and a lot of her research has been on uh, what she calls the mindset model um, which hence the title of the book is mindset uh, the subtitle is the new psychology of success um, and I I don't know I like 
for me, there's a little bit of weirdness in, in presenting it, although I didn't say it, say this in the video that like, it just the, like the way that the tie the, the book is titled sounds so much like one of these like airy fairy pop sci pop psychology, self-help books. Right. Um, and it, but it's really not, it, it really is. Um, it, it is more anecdotal than I would have preferred. Um, uh, because when I read science books, I tend to look for like the, the science books that are sort of more meaty on the research side, but right. it's still, a, it's still a really good book. It's still, um, uh, you know, the, the, nut, the basic nuts and bolts of, of what you, what you need to, to, actually self-help yourself um uh with you know with the science is is kind of all in there um you know despite the 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 sort of a lot of kind of what to me feels like filler although i realize like I'll, i'm sort of i think i'm sort of unusual in that regard and that like i i most people like sort of need a lot of like uh need a lot of story like they need a lot sure. of like anecdotal uh, padding and and I just don't I don't feel like I tend to be that way. Sure. Um, so, uh, but the nuts and the bolts of it is that um, the the thumbnail synopsis of the idea of the mindset model is that um, how what what you believe around the nature versus nurture debate can have a profound impact on uh on the choices that you make in your life and so um uh on the nature side you know where, where if if you believe that like all of your abilities are just innate like your iq is iq is a bad idea but as an I, you know, if you place a lot of stock in your IQ being genetic, like you are, you know, what you are because of your parents, because you were born that way, um, it discourages you from then actually studying and so forth, from doing the things that you would need to do in order to achieve success, because you, uh, if you believe that that all of your or whatever are innate if you believe that they're built in then you don't believe that studying is actually effective um and it's it's a little new wants than that switch off you know all nature and or all nurture or people generally don't but people lean way or the other and generally speaking like the more you lean toward the nature side the more you lean toward believing that your abilities are just sort of built in genetic from your genetics from you know accidents of your birth um the 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 harder your life becomes really you become very complicated um because not believing that you can um, study or, or train to improve things, man, that's just really setting yourself up for failure. So let's talk about some real world examples of someone with a growth mindset and someone with more of a static. Oh uh, yeah, mindset. sure. Um, so, uh, what flavor do you want? You want uh, sports? You want business? Let's talk, talk, talk to me about the CEO disease. I noticed that <laughs> we, we put that into one of the last video there. The CEO yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like a number of studies, uh, aside from the mindset material, a number of studies show that um, uh, um, the the wealthier a person becomes, uh, generally speaking, the less self-aware they are and the less um empathy they they have um there are you know obviously there are exceptions but um what tends to happen is that like as you acquire power and money um it becomes less necessary for you to uh listen to uh to criticism uh so um you know when you're, you know, working as the stock boy in your grocery store, you kind of have to accept, you know, whatever criticism sure. your, your oh, boss yeah. is giving you. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're like the CEO of the company, then, you know, you get to say like, you know, 
well, you know, this guy thinks I'm, you know, I could improve. I think he's an asshole. I'm going to fire him. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, what happens is that people have a ten in who become CEOs tend to do that. They tend to just sort of like fire the, their critics. And what happens is that they, en they end up never really hearing because they, they surround themselves with yes men and they never end up hearing the things that uh, would help them to actually improve, would help the right. – uh, them to improve their management skills and improve the, the company's performance overall. And um, it, so, it's so that it, that this phenomenon of surrounding yourself with yes men, which is, that's what the term group think was coined to describe this phenomenon of like, I'm, you know, I, there are only yes men around me. And so they all, so just agree with me. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't, they don't agree with me. They're yes men. And so the, the group thinks like I do. And so, you know, you never, because you never get a, a, you know, a variety of like warnings about like, Hey, you know, um, maybe it's not a good idea to like try and sell steak knives, uh, cell phones with built-in steak knives in the sharper right. image catalog. Sure, maybe sure, people sure. aren't, you know, dying to get that feature on their cell phone. Um, uh, and so, um, uh, and, and people the, get this attitude, this attitude about that they are going to be right no matter what, because of right, this yeah, kind yeah. of inborn, this belief that they have inborn talent. Yeah, that's what I was getting to is that like, so groupthink is a thing that, that can happen to anybody. Um, but it, it is especially prevalent if you started out with a, with a more sort of a fixed mindset, fixed mindset, the fixed and nature are the two words that go together. So nature versus nurture and Carol uh, Dweck d d uh, describes these as, as uh, fixed or growth. So mm -hmm. nature is fixed and growth is, is nurture. Um, uh, so um, yeah. So like if you had a nature or, or fixed mindset um, and you know, some, you're a CEO of a company and some guy comes to you and he's, he says, you know, Hey, you know, I, I, I have some doubts about this new product idea, this, you know, cell phones with steak knives. Um, <laughs> right. uh, if you, you know, are really a fixed thinker, if you're really, you know, like I was just born awesome. I was born great. And, you know, so like anybody that criticizes you, anything, any decision that you've made, like the steak knife thing, you know, they, they offer any criticism that is a threat to your, you know, predetermined greatness. Yeah. And so, you know, you tend rather than to like take in the criticism and say like, okay, so, you know, if let's test this idea, you know, how do we, figure out if this criticism is, is, you know, worth addressing um, rather than doing all of those things that would ensure that, you know, you have a good successful product launch mm -hmm. or that you at least don't launch something that's horrendous that nobody wants. <laughs> well, what I found interesting. As you an tend to just of, fire the guy instead. Right. Um, the opposite of that being a more of a growth and more of a, um, being flexible kind of mindset is uh, mm, Winston yeah. Churchill and that Winston right, Churchill yeah, yeah. during World War II had had an, um, a group of people giving him bad news. Right. Yeah. He set up a whole department just for specifically that purpose. I think that's a great way to fight groupthink. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I, I'm sort of fond personally of the, the, the idea from the, the, um, uh, Herodotus, who was talking about mm. the, uh, the the Persians, who said that like that um, that uh, the Persians would like they'd get together and they'd have their meetings and they they'd make a decision, but then they wouldn't act on that decision until they until they had the same discussion drunk. <laughs> well, you're more likely to tell someone they're full of shit. If, yeah, if you've had right. a couple of drams in you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You'd like loosen everybody up and see what people really think. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That the you create a safe environment. That's what you yeah. do for open discussion. Right. Yeah, and especially because like then you know like 
to the fact like you don't have to worry too much about like getting fired or whatever because like everybody there is just like yeah well we were drunk <laughs> yeah 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 exactly exactly you know it really resonates with me the idea about this growth mindset and and the nurture uh, i mean the um the nurture part of the nature debate because you know i have this this minor disability and when i was growing up i had a speech impediment mm-hmm. I had gross motor coordination problems. Um, I have poor muscle tone. And and I, I was mm. on the small bus. I had to get pulled out of my uh, kindergarten and sent to the special school for a year. Yeah. And and I really had to grind out the work early. You know, my mm-hmm. earliest memories are um, being in speech class, doing one-on-one speech therapy and spinning out words. Yeah. And the thing is, is that you really don't know what a person can do until you give them the chance to actually do it Uh, right yeah yeah that's a so yeah the the when people are struggling um and i think like i i i debated whether i wanted to remove the 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 sports section about um uh about uh bobby I debated about removing that section because it was like I could recover like five minutes worth of the video and make it shorter. But I ended right. up leaving it in b- uh, because he's a coach. And I wanted specifically to mention that idea that like, you know, well, just because someone is a teacher doesn't necessarily mean that they're all, you know, growth oriented. doesn't necessarily mean that they that they, you know, um, believe that that. Uh, that training is is the key to success in in every area. It's it's very yeah. context dependent. So like, um, and there's some things that obviously are not. You know, like you can't train yourself taller. Um, you know, uh, 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 but most of the things that really matter. You know, training is really important. Um, and in Bobby Knight's case, I think like he he believed that his students could, could train for basketball, that they could get better at basketball, but um, probably not so much uh, about his coaching ability. Um, And it used to be believed like before Tiger Woods, everybody believed that like golf was something that you couldn't train for. And then Tiger Woods came along and he uh, trained all the time and he beat the pants off of everybody. And it's like, no, it's like you can't. Cause if you train, you, you ruin your natural, (laughs) You know, uh, yeah, yeah. I I know that you've talked about you know having autism or being autistic uh, a number of times. You know, when yeah. you were on the when, when you were on the Naked Dino podcast and in the videos too. But the idea that you can't break a skill, no matter how complicated the skill is, that you can't break it down to its constituent parts and then train and then train right? on the individual parts. Yeah. yeah, right. Like you might be a shitty. Like, I had a really tough time learning how to tie my motherfucking shoes. But mm-hmm. let me tell you, yeah. my friend, with enough training, I am now a Olympic level. <laughs> Olympic level tire shoer. <laughs> you know all the shoes. The uh, the big uh, boots I'll... that lace all the way up. And... <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Completely. So, so how does yeah. that resonate? I mean, what, what, I, I mean... Um, so how, so how does that resonate with your experience in, in terms of, of having autism uh, about basically training up in certain areas? Yeah, right. So like a lot of people, I, I get really frustrated with like the parents of, of uh, uh, autistic kids because like there's this real tendency among them to just sort of like to say like, oh, you know, they get the diagnosis and then they, they just they 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 fall apart they're like oh no my they, he's never gonna have a job and he's never gonna get you know get married or have a relationship or like no dude like he needs help like yeah you know when someone is struggling in school and that's the thing is that's the the big difference between the sort of the growth oriented people and the the fix the the fixed mindset people or the nature people that um uh um how you handle setbacks and struggling. So like when you have a setback or when you're struggling, um, the, the best solution to that is to, uh, to try several different strategies to ask Mm -hmm. for outside help, uh, get, you know, a variety of different opinions. And, you know, if you get a bunch of different heads working on the problem, eventually, 
you know, who, whoever it is that's struggling with the problem, they eventually will have that breakthrough, hopefully. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a guarantee, but certainly your odds of success are a lot higher. Um, and so right. there, there, there are strategies to, to stack the deck in your favor in, yeah. in any kind of competition or any kind of um, activity that you're working yeah. to get mastery in. Yeah, right. And so fixed uh, growth oriented thinkers tend to, you know, uh, you know, when someone is struggling, they move to um, uh, increase support for that person it help the to give them more help. Uh, whereas, you know, the fixed thinkers, um, because they think that like, well, it, it's just an aid, like, mm. the, you know, training doesn't m matter. And so um, they, you know, when someone hits a roadblock or they're struggling, they just sort of write it off. They're like, oh, yep. well, he, he'll never master this. We're, we'll just, we'll just switch him to something else. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't, you know, you could try some different things. <laughs> I think that a majority of people are nature people. I mean, is yeah. that just is that just me? Is that I, just? I think that it, I think that it does tend to be a real um, uh, sort of mythology, at least in the U.S. I mean, I don't know about globally, mm. but like at least here in the states, I think um, that that sort of like it's in your DNA is just a real sort of mythology, and I think a lot of people. I think a lot. Of, <sighs> Excuse you're me. Die, sorry, you're not dying on us over there, are you, Sam? <laughs> no, the 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 metformin, the the the, the uh, diabetes medication gives oh, me ga okay. gas. Sure, sure. Um, uh, so I think in the U.S. there is a the, a real sort of mythology of people like just thinking that like that it's just natural. People are just born, and I mentioned this in the video that like Beyonce was just born to sing, or or uh, that uh. uh you know, our favorite basketball players like Michael Jordan are just born to play basketball. And like, no, like these guys, like these people train and train and train like a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then like, but then there's this, this, uh, this magazine article about Beyonce where, um, where the headline of the article is that like Beyonce's, uh, Beyonce's prep for her, her, uh, halftime special at, at at the Super Bowl was to eat a bag of Doritos, which like is, <laughs> and I, that whole idea is just utter bullshit. She trained, yeah. she trained yeah. and trained and trained and yeah. prepped for that show. And then like five I, I, I minutes. I would be skeptical whether or not that, that article was um, paid by uh, Doritos to tell you. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, That's what I would wonder. Product placements, yeah. Doritos. Yeah. Will will make you successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just. But we do. I think we tend to be that way. We tend to sort of like not notice like the hours and hours and hours of training because like that's boring. Like watching people study is boring. Yeah. Um, it is, and so. It is. It is boring. <laughs> yeah. And so we tend to just focus on like, you know, like she just came out and she banged it out of the park. And all we need to know about is the 10 minutes before the show where she was eating the Doritos. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so what are the projects you got in the works? What what other stuff you got going on? Um, Right at this moment, I'm a little over halfway through, uh, a new video about toxic masculinity. Oh, cool. Um, uh, which, um, I think, you know, the, the problem with like all of the, the controversy over the subject of toxic masculinity ultimately boils down to the people that are pissed off by it, not bothering to like Google, like, um, <laughs> it, it's a knee jerk response. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. Um, Right. And so like they don't Google and they don't go and see the Wikipedia article and discover that, oh, well, this this term was coined by a men's movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it actually like the the people that coined the term want the same thing that the reactionaries want. They just they want men to 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 have less anxiety and less shame and be more confident and, and so forth. Um 
and they just, just all they were they were doing was acknowledging that you know the the sort of like suck it up be a man you know puts a lot of pressure yeah. on guys that you know maybe isn't necessarily the most helpful for them <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah definitely so when do you think the video is going to be coming out um a timeline uh, I am hoping uh, this upcoming, not not this Wednesday, but the, the following Wednesday, because this good. Wednesday is is the part three of the mindset video. Now, is that um, the last part of the mindset video? It is. Uh, okay, part good. three is the last good. part. Um, the the middle part was longer. Was long. I like to try and keep my videos under about thirty minutes, and the middle part was thirty eight. After I did some like extens extended editing to cut the time down. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, uh, so, um, but the, the, the last part is actually the shortest of them. It's only about 15 minutes and it really, it mostly covers um, the, like, how to, how do you help sort of train yourself out of the, the sort of the mythology of DNA. Right. right. Um, but it also, has a little bit sort of I think at the front of the video there's a little bit about the um, uh, there's a little bit of info about the the uh, the the self-esteem movement which mm. really um, has been in the long run super harmful um, and I mean I could have done a whole separate video just on the harm done by by self-esteem but like self you know I would have had to self-esteem being divorced from any kind of skill set. Or, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that like you know the uh, when you go to the soccer game and like everybody gets a trophy whether they won or lost like that. Yeah. That sort of thinking isn't really. I mean, yeah. It it sucks to lose, but you know that's what training is for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm with you on that one. Um. Well, I'm looking so, forward to it. I'm looking forward to the. I mean, like I said, that the last, the first two videos that you put out recently in this series, full of information, and I learned a whole ton of stuff. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. That's uh, that's my goal. So it's good to know that I that I'm that I'm hitting my marks. Well, you're doing it with me. I mean, and I'm an <laughs> idiot. So I mean, if I'm learning something, I think I think you do. I think you're spot on. That, that yeah. That's, that's what I think. That's what I, I think. I do sometimes sort of worry about that, like, um, you know, when you when you have studied a subject for a while and you know a whole, whole lot about it and then you go try and explain it to somebody that like, so like, you know, where do you start? Like, because yeah. it, that's one of the problems that like teachers have, like teachers, the thing that teachers have to train for is knowing what information their students don't know. Yeah, um, yeah true enough, true enough. Because they're going like, you know, Welcome to Physics 101. We're going to start with uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the deep. No, end. you gotta you gotta build it up to that. Yeah. Right, <laughs> not... right, right. Yeah. Wise words, my friend. Wise words. So, where can people find you online? Where can people uh, find you on the Twitters and YouTube and stuff? I, yeah, I am on. Uh, I think I do most of my social media on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, at at. Uh, Weirdly, not Wuhooligan. Um, uh, my Twitter is at Data Fawcett. Um, all one word. Um, mm -hmm. It that's a holdover from when I was doing software engineering. Sure, sure. Um, and I just never got around. I never changed it. Yeah. Um, but uh, also my webs uh, my website Wuhooligan dot com. Uh, Woohoo! Just like you know, you would say the onomatopoeia. W-O-O-H-O-O, -O -O, but it's a portmanteau with the word hooligan, H-O-O-L-I-G-A-N.com. That's my, that's my webcomic. And I don't spend too much time on Facebook. I am on there occasionally. I do check my messages. Um, and, uh, and of course, your YouTube channel, which is Hooligans, right? Yes. That's the name of well, the YouTube channel. It is right. So if you look up if you look up Wuhooligan on YouTube, the problem is uh, the first result for Wuhooligan on YouTube is going to be um, uh, a guy who does reviews of sneakers and and I'm I'm guessing athletic type clothing mostly yeah. in the, the Philippines. <laughs> yes, I didn't know that. So you have an S at the end. You're Wuhooligans, aren't you? 
Uh, no, 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 no. Mine is Wuhulgan. Uh, Wuhulgan Space Comedy is okay. the the brand name. So right. it, it's, it's a little it's a little clunky, but you know it, it's what was available because Wuhulgan you got a was picture already of a pig. You know, take, taken on thing. YouTube. I do. Yeah, yeah. The the Pegasus is is sort of my has become my avatar. That that uh, Roman hoplite soldier with a spear who's right. really intense and he's riding this winged pig with a giant grin on his face. Um, Funny stuff, man. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was good uh, talking to you, Andy. And we'll put you on the uh, Naked Diner at some point, too. I'll talk yeah, to that'd you be great. Great. That'd be All great. Right, man. Have a good one, Andy. Hey, you too. Bye. Take care.